Hi guys, after I showed you Bernoulli's equation and you and how to implement it, you've probably been already applying it to some of your problems. Very simple, just identify a streamline, apply the equations at two points of the streamline using the Bernoulli's equations. Very easy as that. However, in the study of fluid mechanics, some of the more difficult problems, we notice that there cannot be a direct implementation of Bernoulli's equation. As a matter of fact, we need to use an altered form. Now, we have already seen one of his altered form during the derivation, and that was before we done the integration, where there was a sine theta and we, there was partial derivatives. Well, it turns out that certain problems need to use that form. So, in a way, what I would like to do is to look at one of an example. And at least it gets us um, familiar with the integration and differentiation and really how to understand the conceptually the problem and how we apply the equation. So I think of an appropriate example which I've appropriately named, no pun intended, appropriate application of Bernoulli's equation. And the problem is like so. We define an axis, x in this direction, z in this direction. The y axis shooting out, but let's leave that out of the analysis. We got a certain sphere centered at O with radius of A. And how the problem starts is that water is moving from this point to the sphere where we define the x-axis like, uh, like so, and water is moving from x equals to negative infinity all the way at the back. But for drawing a good diagram, let's just say x equals to negative infinity is over here. So water is going from here to here, the velocity as x of x and x equals to infinity, negative infinity is uh, VA equals to V0. And when x is equal to minus a, the velocity is zero. Well, hopefully we tend to get that result because as the water hits the sphere at point B, the water stops, velocity equals to zero. Now, for a complex and difficult liquid to analyze, the velocity of the liquid is given by a quite complicated function, which is the one over here. Well, actually, it's not too complicated, but it's different. V equals to V naught, open parentheses, one plus a to the three divided by x to the three, close parentheses. That's the velocity function. And our job for today is to find the pressure function. Of course, using Bernoulli's equation or more appropriately term and appropriate application of it. So, let's start. Now, Bernoulli's equation we started out with is pressure plus half rho v squared plus rho g z is equal to a constant c. Now, I replaced the specific way with rho g, doesn't matter, the same thing. So, what we can eliminate one of the terms already is the z term because our analysis is in this line, z equals to zero. So, what we now become is one pressure plus half rho v squared is equal to a constant c. Okay, and my things, my things get a little bit tricky right now. Now, what I will start our analysis is that we need to deal with the limits of the integration, which we did not take into account in the previous lesson. Why do I say that? Because notice that there are two values over here, which is basically the velocity and the distance. And likewise, over here, we got the distance and the velocity. So, we, it's, it's very difficult to use this form because we have not taken into account the limits of the integration. However, what do we know about calculus? Well, basically, we had our form previously over here. We integrated that to get this one over here. How about we try to go from this to the previous function that we had before? And instead of integrating, what we need to do now is to differentiate. And what do we want to differentiate? We differentiate with respect to x. See? That's what I like because we can start with the Bernoulli's equation and now we can differentiate with respect to x to really form a differential equation and then solve it. Partial p, partial x, plus half rho, I will have a 2v and I will have a partial v, partial x equals to 0 because differentiate a constant. I will get this thing over here and our equation that we want to start out with partial p, partial x is equals to negative v, rho v, sorry, ne uh, negative velocity, partial v, partial x. Uh, there's a, is that, yeah, there's a rho inside here. Okay, that is the equation, our differential equation. We have differentiate that, partial differentiate with respect to x. The liquid can move in all sorts of directions, but for sake of our argument, I'll be analyzing the liquid moving in this direction, which is the x direction. So let's settle this term over here. V, okay, V is partial V, partial x. V times partial V, partial x. Well, the velocity equation, we have it right there. So we can just substitute it inside. 1 plus a to the 3, x to the 3, close parentheses. Partial differentiate that with respect to x. This one will be limited to zero, so I'll bring this inside and, and differentiate that with respect to x. What I will get is basically minus 3 v naught a to the 3 divided by x to the 4. Okay, and I will just rewrite that in a more neat form, which I already have written here. 3 v naught squared 1 plus a3 x3 to the 3 multiplied by a3 uh, divided by x to the power of 4. And this is less than zero, so how it turns out. What does this tell us? This tells us that 
as we move along the x direction, as the x value increases, there will be a drop in the velocity given by the negative sign over here less than zero. Well, that so far is consistent with our analysis because as the fluid moves from this direction to this direction, there has to be a drop in the velocity as it slows down all the way to point B. I hope that makes sense. Now, I will just now continue our analysis. I will put this equation over here. I multiply that by a negative rho v to get the partial p partial x. So partial p partial x is equals to negative rho and this thing, this big thing over here. So what I'll do is that since there's a negative here and there's a negative here, I will just um, sub times them together to get positive and just bring this whole thing over here. So three v naught squared. 1 plus a to the 3, x to the 3, a to the 3, x to the 4. Yeah, and close bracket. Now, what can we tell about this thing over here? Well, it turns out that this thing over here is more than 0. If this is less than 0, we multiply that by a negative sign, we get more than 0. So, now I've also sketched out the velocity, the pressure gradient from our pressure gradient in terms of x over here. Or I sketched it out before, so I'm going to write it. So, write it here. Partial P, partial X, and X over here. Now, there's a maximum value for that. What is the maximum value? The maximum value is at negative 1.205A, and the value that partial P, partial X takes would be 0 0.610 V naught, sorry, rho V naught squared times divided by A, and there's a rho over here. Now, let's look at this diagram. It's good to analyze. This is the rate of change of pressure. It starts out as zero or a uh, value close to zero. It increases all the way up like so, knowing that this is still not negative a. Negative a is over here, and then it drops like that. If we were to graph out this equation right here, this is what we have. Well, let's kind of have a look about it because I think it's good. That means at this at a distance before b, the pressure would have to be very high. Now, why is it very high? Well, simply because there needs to be a high pressure to slow down the liquid before the liquid hits point B, and in which case where the velocity is zero. So in a way, the pressure takes a maximum value just before um, minus A, which is, we just draw it over here, just before the liquid hits B, which is, um, as, which is what we expect. Now, this is the equation that we have, and we're almost done. So what we're going to do, separate variables integrate. The limits of the integral is that we're integrating from pressure equals to zero, which is the point over here, to a pressure P, and we're integrating that with respect to x. Now, at pressure equals zero, x is negative infinity. So we need to be clear about that. Next, negative, negative infinity over here, and we want to integrate that to the point of x, which is a certain point along the x-axis rate, and integrate that whole big equation like so, which I'll just write down like this. And without without integrating in this video because I can't I don't I don't think it's a bit it's a bit troublesome but I I, I didn't know the in, in the result the result that we have is pressure is equals to minus rho v naught squared and we got a, a divided by x to the power of three plus a divided by x divided by two sorry at the top to the power of two now this is what we have so finally our pressure equation integrating and putting the limits of the integral. Now, let's look at one final analysis. Can pressure have a maximum value from this equation over here? I suspect that the maximum value will be positive and it would be equal when it will be x when x is equals to negative a. When x equals to negative a, this is reduced to 1. Okay, this is a negative over here. So we want to get the maximum value by finding, if possible, a negative value for this for this parentheses over here. I hope that makes sense. So if we find a negative value for this parentheses, we will subtract by this, multiply by this, and we'll get a positive value, okay? Now, how do we get a negative value? Well, if we put x equals to negative a, this becomes minus one, and we will plus with a half, because this is always positive. So one minus, sorry, minus one plus a half, we get a half, right? Well, that somehow turns out to be the correct answer, and when x is equals to negative a, pressure is equals to 0.5, rho v naught squared. And that turns out to be the maximum value. Sorry, I shouldn't draw it like that. Um, it will be, yeah, okay, now I just draw it like this. This will be equal to 0 0.5 rho v naught squared. And then after that, pressure just drops. Pressure just drops. Remember, this is the pressure function. This is the pressure function, and this is the partial p, partial x. So, 
What does that mean? Now, as the liquid moves in this direction, there will be a build-up in the rate of change of pressure, or the rate of pressure is at its maximum, there will be a build-up of pressure to the point where when it hits this part over here, the pressure will be the greatest so as to slow down the liquid. Remember, the liquid is moving at a high velocity, so it needs to slow down before it hits the, the sphere over here. And that is given by this equation right here, and we have found out when x equals to negative a, at this point, the pressure takes a maximum value, after which the pressure just drops. Very good analysis. This is what we need to do, an appropriate use of Bernoulli's equation to get to the differential form and then solving the equation. I hope you like it, and I hope you've learned something.